Welcome back to a brand new PTCG live video. Today I'll be doing something a little different. We will be looking at the decks that are winning currently in Japan as they've already had rotation in Japan and they're already using all of the new cards and temporal forces, which should be releasing here in the United States fairly soon, somewhere between the March 18, mid-March. And it's pretty crazy to think that I've already seen booster box openings for temporal forces on YouTube already. So the tournament we will be looking at for the deck list will be the Champions League that was held in Japan on February 17. They did have 2,655 participants for this tournament, which I feel like will give us a pretty good uh, barometer of what will be winning post-rotation here. So as you can already see, the first place deck is going to be Lugia V-Star. I feel like Lugia V-Star does improve quite a lot with Path to the Peak rotating out. And if you're not really familiar with Path to the Peak, it was a stadium card that you could put into play, which did shut down all abilities of rule box Pokemon. So it was a pretty um, annoying stadium card, pretty powerful. And of course it does affect Lugia as it was a Pokemon that has ability, a V-Star ability that is. And we also do gain a pretty valuable single prize attacker for Lugia. We do get Chinchino over here. I believe it does 70 damage for every special energy you have in play, which complements Lugia V-Star very well because Lugia V-Star uses its ability to get these Archeops out of the discard and onto your bench. And with Archeops, you do get to search out your deck for special energies and attach them to your Pokemon. And it looks like Mist Energy will also be super popular. Mist Energy nullifies the effects of your opponent's Pokemon attack. So that stuff like Frenzy Gouging will be completely nullified with Mist Energy here. And it looks like for the Ace Spec card, they did use Master Ball here. Looking at the second prize deck, I'm also kind of surprised to see that um, Alolan Vulpix V-Star will be probably gaining so much more popularity here with the new rotation and it's mostly because of its snow mirage it it is going to do much better for the same reasons as lugia v star because of that path to peak rotating out the snow mirage will be far more reliable where you'll be able to wall your opponent out do that 160 damage and then they have no way to attack you next turn and of course it still uses the arceus v star engine here of course it is a very good card and I feel like Arceus V-Star will be in rotation all the way up to the end here. So It also does use the Mist Energy as well. It run two copies of Mist Energy, which is really good. A really good special energy. And it does use Prime Catcher for the, for the Ace spec here. Next up, we got a Stall Snorlax deck. Now, Snorlax is pretty annoying. And it is kind of surprising how this deck has gained quite a lot of momentum. I feel like with Paradox Rift and the 151 set really did help boost this uh, deck up quite a lot. And there's not all too much here that is added on. They did use Hero's Cape as their ace spec card. And yeah, not much new stuff for the stall Snorlax deck here. Next up we got Charizard who took 4th place. I'm not really surprised at all if Charizard taking 4th place. It's probably going to be popular for a long, long, long time. And they did use Prime Catcher as their, um, their A spec card. 7 energy zone A, so it's kind of like that Azul GG build. They do use Radiant Zard. I feel like Radiant Zard did become a little bit more popular. Let's see, moving on to, uh, on to fifth place. Fifth place looks like it's going to be Lost Box. So yeah, Lost Box is still going to be popular. I feel like Giratina V-Star. Well, this one actually doesn't look like a Giratina V-Star deck. This is going to be Roaring Moon Lost Box with Hands and Raikou V here. And they did use Prime Catcher as the ace spec. Forgot what Emergency Board did. Let's see, there's another uh, Lost Box deck here for 8th place, I believe. And yeah, this is the Giratina V-Star deck. I feel like Giratina, just like Arceus, will stay in rotation all the way to the very end, like Mew VMAX. 
and they did also use iron leaves so that is a new card from temporal forces that's probably going to gain a lot more popularity uh with iron with iron leaves ex you can see that it does 180 base damage so that's basically the perfect number that you need to one hit ko the charizard from obsidian flames so i feel like this card's going to really gain a lot of popularity and people will incorporate it as much as they can into their decks here they did use maximum belt as the as the, the ace spec card here which i believe it does 50 extra damage if um against opposing pokemon exs i believe so let's see we get another snorlax stall deck okay this was uh, the eighth place deck which is another stall Snorlax deck. It's basically just like a carbon copy of the previous one. Next we got Ancient Box. So Ancient Box is going to be pretty much everything or most of the new cards being utilized from Temporal Forces. But none of the EXs actually. It will be mostly just using these single prize attackers. They got three Flutter Mains, four Crydons, four Roaring Moons, and one Great Tusk. So what I find kind of interesting actually here, you got pretty decent type coverage here. You know, you got Fighting, you got Psychic, you got Dark type, you know, pretty good type coverage. Of course they do run Fighting Energies. And they do use Awakening Drama. I did forget what this card did. Wow, the third Snorlax deck. So the, it looks like another Snorlax deck did make 10th place. So three stall Snorlax decks. I do think Snorlax will become really popular here with the new rotation. And this one's kind of interesting, actually. They do incorporate Noibat and Noivern here, EX. Let's see. But other than that, it's pretty, pretty similar. They do also have Mantine here, which it looks like it's there just for that first attack. Put a basic Pokemon from either player's discard pile onto that player's bench. And all the trainers do look pretty similar. They even use one Hero Cape as well for the A spec. Uh, let's see, 11th place, we got uh, Giratina, so we got Lost Tina here with Iron Leaves, of course. So they do run the Iron Leaves for the for the Charizard Knockout. And let's see, they run four Grass Energies for it. They do run Prime Catcher for the, for the Ace spec here. Let's see, next we got 12th place. For 12th place, it looks like this is a Great Tusk Ancient Box deck of some kind. That's what it looks like. It does use Hero's Cape for the Ace spec. So it's kind of unfortunate that there aren't really that many new EXs from Temporal Forces that are going to really be gaining any play here. It looks like it's just going to be the Iron Leaves and the Iron Crown here. So here we got another Charizard deck. It's really just a very standard Charizard deck. It does run the seven basic fire energies, very limited. And it does use Prime Catcher just like the previous one. It looks very... Very similar, and does use Bibarel as the draw engine there. Let's see, 14th place, this is the Future Box deck. It does use Iron Hands as well as the Iron Crown, which the Iron Crown is the newly released EX from Temporal Forces. And yeah, it looks like they're definitely not attacking with Iron Crowns. They do use uh, the Lightning Energies, of course. They do, do utilize Techno, techno Radar. And... Oh no, is there an ace spec card here? I don't see one. Oh no, it looks like they used the reboot pod here. Okay. Kind of forgot what that one does. I'm gonna have to look that up. Let's see, 15th place is a Charizard deck. This is like the 4th or 5th Charizard deck here. Except this one doesn't use Bibarel as the draw engine. And it uses six fire energies. That is crazy. Six only. And it does use Hero's Cape, interestingly enough, which this does give 100 additional HP to whichever Pokemon you attach this to. So no Prime Catcher in this one. And lastly, we got the 16th place deck here. 
It looks like it's going to be a Lost Box deck with the with Iron Bundle. And... Yeah, this looks like it's kind of like a mix. It's going to use Iron Hands, Raikou V, Roaring Moon. It's kind of going to be just a Lost Box mix here. And let's see, for Trainer cards, they did use Prime Catcher. Emergency board, I did forget what that was, that does, as well as they do use Friendship Poffin, three of those. So that's pretty interesting to see the new decks that are winning here. It looks like there aren't going to be really many uh, EXs from Temporal Forces that will be very competitive. It looks like it's just going to boil down to the, the Iron Leaves and the Iron Crown, and that's just about it. And then, of course, all of the A-spec cards will be very interesting because, of course, you can only play one in your deck. So I'm pretty sure everyone there are going to try probably all of them out, see which ones are the best ones. But I feel like the big takeaway here is it looks like Lugia V-Star and Vulpix V-Star will be the two big decks from the, from the, for the post-rotation here. So let's take a look at the prices on TCG Player. It is pretty interesting to see the prices for what... I'm really perceiving to be the top two decks with the post rotation. It will be looking like the Lugia V Star and Vulpix V Star. And going into TCG player, we can see the Lugia V is getting very popular here. It did climb up in price quite a bit. It's about $8 now. And you can see, even like right here, right after February 18, 20 ish, it did jump up in price. And even when looking at the sell-through sell through rate, you can see that tons of copies of this card are being sold every day. It is just flying off TCG player. Next, we got the promo card. It isn't as popular as the card from Silver Tempest. Maybe not as many people know about the promo card, but the promo card is sitting at about 4 to $5 as well. Definitely an option if the one from Silver Tempest just goes out of control in terms of price. Next, we got the Lugia v, uh, v Full Art. This one also did climb up a bit in price. It was like $6 in the beginning of February. And now it's sitting at about $10 for the Full Art here. So it looks like all the Lugias are going up or went up in price even before Temporal Forces dropped here in the United States. So we got Lugia V Star here from Silver Tempest. It also just went up in price as soon as February rolled around. It's about $10 today if you want to buy this card. And the sell-through rate is insanely high for this card. It is just flying off of TCG Player, as I've said. I feel like if you do want to get this card, you should get it sooner than later because it can just spike up in price. You can see here there's also only just 93 listings on all of TCG Player, which is kind of low considering how many packs of cards are opened on YouTube. <laughs> Next we got the Hyper Rare Gold Lugia V-Star. This one's sitting at about $21 and it did go up quite a lot in price. And people do like to bling out their deck, get a full playset of gold Lugia V-Stars. It was like about 12 bucks in the beginning of February. Now it's sitting at about 18, 20-ish dollars. And lastly, we do have the Rainbow uh, Lugia Secret Rare. It didn't really move up at all in price. It's basically just about the same. It's about $22 as it always was since, yeah, since the last three months. Moving on to the Aloha and the Vulpix V. The Vulpix V is not seeing the same price movement as Lugia V or V-Star. The Vulpix V just seems to be completely flat and maybe just not popular. But it's sitting at just 50 cents for the regular V from Silver Tempest. We got the promo card from the holiday calendar also just sitting at around 50 to 75 cents. And the sell through rate is actually just not that crazy at all compared to Lugia. It's just like a couple of day. Next we got the full art of the Vulpix V. Also it didn't really move up in price at all. It's sitting at more or less the same price as it was three months ago. So it's pretty interesting. The Vulpix V is not moving at all in price here. And we got the Vulpix V-Star. It's also just sitting there at about $1.50. It went up a little bit in price. It was like a dollar in the beginning of February, and now it's like about $1.50. So Vulpix V-Star will still be like very cheap and affordable. And checking out the Rainbow Secret Rare Alone Vulpix. 
V-Star here, it's also just sitting just about at the same price it always was for the last three months here. It's about a $12 card, and you can still pick it up for 12 bucks. It is kind of selling a little bit. We can see the sell-through rate is pretty interesting. It is selling just about every day, and people are buying up this card and probably using it for their deck. So those are all the prices that I really wanted to check out, specifically mostly just for these two decks, the uh, Lugia V-Star and uh, Vulpix V-Star, of course. So if you liked the video, please drop a like, a sub, and I'll see you in the next one.